Creole Parametric 4.0 Lesson 2 Part 2. We're going to cover some of the customization of menus in that in this portion of Lesson 2. At the very top we have the quick access set of commands that are available. If you put your cursor over the top of them in the upper left side right mouse button you'll see you have some choices. One of them is to minimize the ribbon. You can actually remove the quick access toolbar, the little toolbar across the top. And you can access a variety of other commands. Now, only a few things are going to show here because a part is not active. I'm going to open up the T-nut just to have something on the screen. And you'll see that the quick access now has a few more choices. If I put my cursor here, I can minimize the ribbon and the quick access if I want to customize it first of all I could remove it I could show it below the ribbon and then it'll go right here put it back at the top and I can go directly into customizing it now these are the commands that are available right now and I could go in the list of all the commands that are available and put some over here. Now if I'm in the assembly I'm going to want something different than if I'm in the part mode. Same way as the drawing mode, something different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the erase not displayed. So if you open up and you work on five different parts and you close them but do not shut down Creo, you'll have them in session. This would remove whatever is in session. So I'm going to move it over to the side here, click the arrow, and it's going to be available up on the top. At any time, you can go and reset the quick access, and you can reset all the tabs down here. I'm going to click OK. And now we have some other options up on top. One of them is the erase. So I can make this into anything I want depending on how many I want to use and what's convenient. You'll see if I click on the down arrow here I can actually turn any of these off at any time. And I'm going to go and select the one I just put on here which is the erase not displayed. And I had one other <clears throat> part in session and that's the only thing that's going to be shown here. I'll click OK. So, for instance, if I uh, shut this down and then I have, let's say I didn't save it even, and I'm going to hit Erase Not Displayed, the T-Nut is now going to show. I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to go over here and in Session is the T-Nut still. At this point, I can directly access it because it's really running behind or it's still in Session. Now, other things we can do with the keyboard with the with the uh, customization we can customize the ribbon itself sometimes you have to move this down a little bit and this set of commands here is also available under options and you'll see we have customize in here the ribbon quick access short menus keyboard shortcuts keyboard shortcuts you can see control A is to activate and you can go down and you can see all the different with copy as which is typical copy and paste cut is the same as a typical application on a computer we have delete we have all kinds of different ones that are available that you can take a look at they're listed in the book in the beginning of the in the beginning of the text in the introduction at the end of the introduction so here, let's just go to the ribbon, and you can see when you do that, just like with Microsoft, it just activates these little groups that are here. So for instance, if I want to change something, for instance, I'm going to click down here. These are spillovers. There's an overflow area. What if I want that blend to always be up here? I just take it and drag it. If I don't want it, I just click on it and bring it down. Truthfully, I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to just keep it up there doesn't make the ribbon that much longer and you've got plenty of space especially if you're using the full width of the screen 
for your window. So on any of these, we can actually go in here and we can change these by moving them around or bringing them up and down. Under the datum one, there isn't really anything extra. Maybe a default coordinate system if you want that. But you can go and alter any of these that you wish. And it depends on what one of the tabs is activated, what you're going to get. For instance, let's go to view. And we have model display. And we have temporary shade. I always like temporary shade. So if I move that up on the top here, we get temporary shade. Now, on any of these, if the button size gets to be something you don't need this large, you just click on it and you can change. And you can change it to hide the label or to make it smaller or no icon, just words. But a small button a lot of times makes it a little bit less cluttered. So again, you can do that. If we click over anywhere in this area, you normally can get solutions to anything that you want to build on your ribbon. And again, there are systems that show too much. And in this case here, sometimes Creo or the PTC products, they keep it to the minimum. And then later, if you want to change something, you can change something. I'm going to click OK. Well, let's see if we want to add anything. We can actually add it to whichever one of these that we want to select. Again, going back to the model. So we can change the, the ribbon. And if you look over here, you'll see that these are the selections that have been pre-programmed in there. You can add anything you want underneath one of the active items that you select. Under Tools, for instance, you go down here and under View. And you can see the ones that are already shown. And again, under those, you'll see all the options. So you can remove these. We can add new ones, however you want to build your menus. And again, it depends on what type of industry you're in and how you're going to be using your system. Sometimes you don't want to see things that you're never, ever going to um, be using. And I'm just going to go down here, and I'm going to reset all the ribbon and everything will go back to its default. Now we talked about this before. If we wanted to go to our screen graphics menu here, we can add items to it and we can have them visible all the time. We can turn this off also. We can also reset it to default. <coughs> you can see I must have had something on there because it changed my menu. Now, if I put my cursor up here, right mouse button, I can minimize it, I can customize it, I can do a variety of things. And again, it depends on where you're positioning your cursor, what you're going to get. How about if we want to hide the labels? So now in the shapes area, we have those off. Can even minimize the group, and then everything is just a drop down. Here's the labels back on. I don't use any of this very often because when I record items for the book or I teach a class, I can't have customization. Customization means that I will be doing things, and all of a sudden, Somebody will see me do five things, and they'll say, how did that happen? Well, I had maybe programmed a, um, one of my buttons. Maybe I added some capabilities. I altered something. I can't do that with the book because you're getting it directly out of the box, or I should say out of a download, and you're going to see the software as it is in its default situation, and that's why I always try to keep everything. So let's go back over here to options. You're going to go here quite often take a look at it. And again, our customization is all in here. Shortcut menus. So these are the menus that come up when you use your right mouse button, depending on what you're working on. 
you know, what, and what I mean by that is depending on what mode you're in. If you're working on a drawing, you're going to have different options show up for you. So we mentioned this before. Whatever you select, automatically this is going to come up as the options available at that point with that selection. If you click on your right mouse button, you'll get more choices. And under customization, you can take anything you want, and you can see it's checked up here. You can add those into it. For instance, I'm just going to move this one up over to here like so. And again, if we want to at any point, we can reset, reset everything back to its original. Go back one more time, take a look at the options. And at any point, you should spend, uh, whenever you have time, spend some clicks here going and seeing what is available for all the different items. There's all the standard things, but for instance, setting your shade. If you set it too high, things might, on your system, depending on your graphics card, might move too slowly and you know, bog things down. So the higher you set it, the slower your system if you don't have a good graphics card. Entity, I like to put in shading with edges and, and very high quality. I like to dim my tangent edges when it goes from, let's say, a round into a flat surface or from round to round or round to a curve. I don't want to see them. Sometimes people turn those off completely, and that's that's sometimes a good idea also. Depending on what you're working on. Selection shows how, when your cursor moves on something, what it's going to choose. And under Sketcher, we have number of decimal places and snapping sensibility. And we also have the show grid snap and turn the grid on and off. Under assembly we have a lot of different options and again we're going to keep most of those the same and these are ones that we really don't consider in this class. And in the next section we'll talk about some map keys. And one more thing, show surface features, show datum curves, show very small surfaces. I like to keep this on, even though it's usually off. And the reason is that I like to see very smooth models when it's shaded. Sometimes, depending on your, again, graphics card and system capabilities, you'll get little tiny white gaps in between surfaces, especially when you have multiple rounds meeting. So I don't like to see those, so I keep this on. But again, it slows the system down a little bit. Now, whenever you do this and you've made some changes, it's going to say, do you want this to be saved with the config file? And, and I'm going to say no, but sometimes you do want to save it, especially if you're building a, a capability into your system for functionality and for uh, productivity for yourself. Go back over here to options. And again, spend some time on all this. Um, I mean, we, on the customization, I did want to show that once you've customized things, you can actually export them. And when you export your customization, it'll come out. You can see I have one here right now. It's called Creo Parametric Customization. I've, I've done this previously, so I've got one that I like to use. So in my case, I could actually import that one, and it's inside of my working directory. I saved it. So I gave it a particular name. Now, if I do that, it's going to say, will override my current settings. Okay, import for all modes, import for active mode only. And we'll leave it right there. So this will bring up things that I've done previously because that's been saved as my interface. Click OK. Now, at first, it doesn't look like much has changed. But if you go up here, there's actually a tab now called Production. And there's a little map key that was created. Previously. So again, that tab is now displayed because I opened up an imported and previously saved interface. In other words, customization. This completes
the second part of lesson two.